Hi, students. Today I'm going to share with you a folk tale from the Aborigines of Australia. And this book is very special to me because my parents bought it for me when I was in sixth grade and we traveled to Australia together as a family. So this is a very old book. The title of this folktale is The Quinkins, and it tells a story about good and evil. So while you're listening to the story, I want you to think about what was important to this Aboriginal family and to the tribe or the group they belong to, and who was good and who was evil. So the story is called The Quinkins. From the beginning, the Alanji tribe belonged to the beautiful country of Cape York. They covered the walls of open caves with their paintings of ancestral beings, sacred animals, and the Quinkins. The Quinkins, spirit people of this land, never allowed themselves to be seen by the Alanji tribe. Yet it was known that there were two groups of Quinkins the Imjin and the Tamara. You can see here an image of the Australian outback. The Imjin were small, fat-bellied, bad fellows with large, ugly heads, long teeth, and claws. They stole children and took them to their cave in the great red mountain called Boonbalbi. The Imjin had long knobby tails that they used like a kangaroo to travel in great leaps across the land. The Tamara was the name of the other Quinkins. They were humorous, whimsical spirits who liked to play tricks on people, but they didn't like the Imjin stealing children and always tried to stop them. The Tamara were very tall almost as tall as the trees, and so skinny that they lived in the cracks of rocks. Here we're meant to see the paintings, and you can see the different characters. There's the engine, and there's an image of the Tamara. In the open cave on Lolita Creek live Moonby with his sister Leolin and their mother Margara and their father, Warnby, and also their grandmother. One afternoon, when their parents were out hunting, Moonby and Leolin thought they heard their father calling from far off in the bush, so they ran to meet him. The bush is what they call this kind of land in the outback. It was not their father, but an Imjim imitating his voice to lure the children away to his dark cave in Boonbalbi Mountain, where the other Imjim waited to turn Moonbi and Leolin into nasty, ugly creatures like themselves. The Imjim kept well ahead of the children so they would not see him. Then he would leap back on his knobbed tail to brush out their tracks so no one could follow. But two willy wagtails were watching him, and so was a Tamara Quinkin. Can you see the good Tamara in this illustration here? I'm going to bring the book a little bit closer to you. Just in case you're not sure, there he is, right there, hiding up against the tree. Let's find out what happens to these children. The children met some Yolanji men returning to camp after a day's hunting. Moonby asked, have you seen Warrenby, our father? One hunter pointed toward the great red mountain, Boonbalbi and said he had heard him calling the children from that direction. No one suspected an Imjin was up to his old tricks. I don't know if you can see him there, but there he is. 
sliding down in that rock. The children walked on towards Boonbalbi, still hearing their father's voice. Suddenly, a large brown snake, Taipan, reared up in front of them. Moonbee cried, look out, and pulled Leelin away before the Taipan could strike her. Hiding nearby and ready to help the children was the Tamara. So very closely, you can see both good and the evil or the bad character in this folktale. The children were hungry with all their walking. When they came to a lagoon, Moonbee caught a tortoise while Leolin gathered water lily bulbs and nanda fruit. They made a fire with fire sticks to cook their food. The Imjin was hungry too. He caught some of his favorite food, large green frogs to eat. All this time, the Tamara was watching. He wanted to rescue the children. The Tamara stretched out his long, thin finger and poked the Imjin in the ribs, giving him such a fright that he leapt over the rocks. Can you see the good character? Grandmother told Warnby and Margara that their children had run off to meet their father when they heard him calling. Warnby said, I did not call out, but perhaps the Injun Quinkins are trying to steal the children. People from the hunting party called out and said they had seen Moonby and Leolin heading towards Boonbalby, the Quinkins' home. Warnby said to Margara, here are the tracks of the hunting party. We will look about the, for the tracks of our children. They searched and searched, but found nothing. Because remember, the Imjin wiped out the tracks, so the parents can't follow. The two willy wagtails sat and watched. After a long search, Margara said, now we are certain the Imjin are trying to steal our children. They have brushed away their tracks, so we cannot follow. We must run to Boonbalbi to save them. Moonbee said, I thought I heard our father call again, but I cannot see his tracks anywhere. This is very strange. Leolin looked fearful around and said, I don't like this place. There might be Imjin about. Let's go home. Looking at the illustrations, I can imagine you see where the Imjin are hiding. But you also see the Tamara. Let's find out. The children that felt drawn toward the dark cave. They moved closer and closer. They could not stop themselves. Leland said, I see awful eyes. Let's run away from here, Moonbee. Just then a huge rock rolled down off the cliff face. A Tamara had kicked it. This broke the spell the engine had cast over the two children, and now they were able to turn and run towards their camp. Moonbee and Leolin ran towards their camp. The Imjin Quinkins from the awful cave started to chase them, but the Tamara called up all of his friends, and a battle began. The Quinkins fought all night, biting, scratching, kicking, and banging each other with sticks. There was an awful noise. When dawn came, they all crawled away to nurse their wounds in dark caves and rock crevices. Moonbee and Leolin met their father and mother. Together, they all ran home through the darkening bush to the safety and warmth of their campfire. Far behind them, they could hear the fierce battle and terrible screeching of the fighting Quinkins.
Safe at home, the family sat around their fire to eat roast emu and yams that had been cooked by grandmother. And before they went to sleep, Moonbee and Leolin promised that never again would they wander alone near the Quinkin haunted caves of Boonbalby. This is a great illustration of the family life. What do you think was the moral of this folktale? The moral means the lesson. What do you think the lesson children are supposed to learn from this folktale is? I wonder if there's any folktales from the United States or from your family's culture that also teach the same lesson. <laughs>